but but uh, but what it is is to, to check crankshafts with in my shop so and I and this right here that's just a kingpin out of something and it's really true and straight so I did put it on there as I was tightening up these all of these bolts so that it would all be in true to itself so let's lay that aside and if you wanted to to, to know if this was straight you would put the indicator right here and rotate it and see what the movement was as in uh, this piece of uh, that's five sixteenths drill rod right there let's let's see it just put it right in uh, and I do have that indicator set up and and normally uh, this is just up here for show and tell but normally I would use this little uh, uh, kind of last word uh, uh, co configuration. It's uh, zero 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 five. You know, it's way down there. It's a lot less travel and a more precise measurement. Uh, this one is only in one thousandths. But but to to use it, and uh, let's put us. Uh, indicator on us so we can see it turn but you you would put it true in in the in the fixture and and I already do have that indicator set up you're not going to be able to see it but when I rotate this when this rotates uh, you can see and I don't want to put any pressure on the middle here to make it deflect I just want to hold pressure you know just enough to turn it and when I do that you you can see that that no you can't see it but take my word for it it is it's uh and you do want a good clean place on your shaft there to check it. And when you turn that right there, you you will see that this one happens to be it's less than one thousandths. I'd say that was a half a thousandths, you know, with this indicator. It's half thousandths. If I was actually going to do this, I would have the other indicator down there and and, and, and probably in a different position where I would equal up. But this is just and and this happens to be what five sixteenths. This one is a that's three sixteenths, and you see it it, it op, operates in here too. And you would do the same thing. You would come over there and uh, uh, that one actually moves a little bit, but I think it's got a it's not smooth. So. But I this I, I would think that's a precision shaft because it don't move any at all until it comes to and it does have when, when you're checking when you put this indicator on there you do want some movement of the indicator you don't want that to just even out right there so you do want that under pressure like that that's about fifty thousandths I guess deflection but you can see that's pretty true also but that that and that will work this machine will function perfectly for that but it's built specifically to be a crankshaft concentricity test machine and like I say these indicators can be mounted any anywhere that you need them on this machine this can be moved in the middle down here anywhere you want it it's it these are a very versatile necessary tool in a job shop let's say and, and this is actually the way this machine will be used on a daily basis I have several of these crankshafts that were out of the engine is the reason for the machine I, I could have actually assembled the engine and then put the dial indicator on it to check the crankshaft but just a standalone crankshaft to know if it is straight and true to itself. And actually, when this machine, when it's in use, I will have two dial indicators, one here and one on the other end, and I will compare the two. And from this point here out on each end, that was free, free material, and most of the time, almost uh, every time, this this part right here will be rusted and will have been emerged or filed in order to get the flywheel off. The flywheel would be right in here and the bearing would be right here. So it's it's of no benefit to indicate this part out here. You want a true non-worn surface. 
Now I do have a project uh, for the for the lathe over there, and I will I will put a piece of material in there, and I, I will make the thing all in one piece, and it will be a a a real close. It look like this: a real close sliding fit on this shaft, and then it will be like eight thinks of a thick, and then the outside will be machined at the same time, and then cut the length two of them, one for each side. That will be in order to clear the keyway so that, that I can turn the crankshaft completely around. But this, the way it is now, to use it, you would turn it, you probably ain't going to get to see that dial up there, but you see this hands are moving when you bring that down. Okay, when you turn that around, you can go around to here and around to there. And that was my that was my trying to to show it. But anyway, turn that back up so it don't catch in that keyway. And uh, but but that that's the way this will be used and what it's for. Just use the three eighths bolt right there to add these leveling feet on this machine. And the way that works, it's it's just a thin nut. Uh, jam nut and a 3 8 bolt and, and if you want to if it's on an unlevel surface then you, you just loosen up this top one here and this would be on the bottom and then turn it up or down and then and then tighten that back up securely and that that makes a, a alignment ever how much you need